It's that spooky time of the year again, which means it's that spooky time of the year again, which means another excuse to watch Mickey's treat. Horror movies are in full swing this time of year, movies designed to give the little heart a good old pounding. Honestly, none of them are really that scary to me. Wow, a slow old man, someone who can only attack you if you're in a camp, someone who can only kill you in dreams, a clown that won't kill you if you're just not afraid of him, and you're not escaping a jigsaw trap, so just spare yourself the pain and give up. But they do have a pretty large fan base, and they can be a fun little thing to dabble in sometimes, as long as you're not a scaredy cat. And I think this year I want to tone it up in scariness a little bit, which is really hard when this is the baseline. Thomas's Halloween Adventures? Oh, metal isn't scary, but you know what is? Wood! <laughs> yep, today we're looking at Monster House. Don't you get any ideas? This is a goofy, goofy little movie about a house that turns into a monster, and I know at some point these two kids pee in a bottle. So Monster House was created by this guy. He originally pitched the idea to DreamWorks, but they kept running into problems, so eventually Sony snatched a hold of it in 2004 and started production that same year. The film was made with fancy performance capture technology, which was basically a way for them to track the actor's movement so they could animate better. And then BAM! Get a Disney star to voice the main character, draw up a scary logo, and field goal kick this thing right into theaters. It did pretty well at the box office, $140 million against a $75 million budget, and it got good review scores as well, generally around the 60 to 70s range. And it's gone on to gain a pretty big fan base. people like the unique looking animation and the interesting premise and story. And today I'm going to tell you what I think of it. Right after we look at the box art, I just need to put timestamps on when I'm done talking about useless things no one cares about. On the front, we've got our four main characters looking pretty spooked, except this girl, she just looks confused and angry. We got this Bonezo at the top here, and what is that, a dog? It's kind of hard to tell since it's so small, but that does appear to be a dog. On the back, TWO VERY BIG THUMBS UP! Alright, which one of you jerks trademarked thumbs up? We got random girl on tricycle, old man, depressed cop, and your friend from elementary school's mom. Special features. Be warned, they are not rated, so if your child gets scarred for life because the filmmakers start murdering each other, well, that's on you. Subtitles, you can get them in English or French, because obviously those are the only two languages anybody cares about. Anyways, let's see how spooky the next 91 minutes will be. So the movie begins with this little girl riding her tricycle throughout the neighborhood, and oh jeez, watch it girl, you'll fall and break your hyoid bone. So I guess her bike gets stuck in the grass for some reason, you know you can just move it. And she's in front of this spooky scary house, and then the spooky scary man comes out and starts screaming a bunch of nonsense at her. Alright, it's not really nonsense, it's more, do you want to die a horrible death? I guess she doesn't though, because she runs away crying, and he breaks her tricycle in half just to be a big jerk, I guess? He heads back inside his creepy house, but not before this kid snaps a picture of him. His name is DJ, and he loves spying on the old man, who we find out is named Nevercracker. His parents are also leaving to go to hell, and when they're backing out of the driveway, they almost kill his friend Chowder. But I guess he's gotten good at shaking off cars, because he just walks it off like he stubbed his toe, and he shows DJ his new ball he got. DJ's like, cool, I don't care, and when Chowder asks him if he's gonna go trick-or-treating that year, he tells him he might be a a little too old for that because he's an adult now. But he still likes staring at his neighbors through telescopes. Come on, man, adults only do that if they're serial killers. Are you a serial killer? Chowder's a big idiot and hits himself in the nose, and his ball rolls on the Cracker Never's yard. Well, you might as well give up, Chowder, because that thing's gone. I don't care that you spent $28 for that ball. Let it go. But since DJ's a big old adult boy now, he agrees to run over and get it, but of course Cracker Whacker comes out right at that exact moment, and DJ just kind of stands there, spying on him with a telescope, taking pictures of him, allowing him to almost grab him. I'm starting to think DJ might have a thing for Never Ever. But clearly he doesn't show the same feeling back, because he tries to grab him and pull him into the house. I have so many problems with this scene. There's this like 80 year old man trying to grab this like 12 year old boy and pull him inside his house while screaming at the top of his lungs. Right when it looks like DJ's done for, he just dies. Yep, he literally just collapses and dies right on top of DJ. So I don't know why he died, and the movie also never tells us why. They're so casual about it, it's just like, oh, he died. Well, time to continue on with the story. We see inside his house that his fireplace turns on and starts shooting smoke everywhere. Cracker Snacker gets taken away in an ambulance, and DJ is left there to take it all in. But that's when his babysitter arrives, and Chowder books it on out of there. And I would too, because she's not very nice. Once she finds out his parents are already gone, she goes from super nice kindergarten teacher to your friend from middle school's sister. She sends DJ up to his room, and he decides to just call it a day and go to sleep. But he has a nightmare where the house's shadow creeps into his bedroom and tries to eat him. But was it really a dream? Because he gets a call from somebody, but they don't talk when he answers the phone, and when he calls them back, the ringing comes from Cheese at Cracker's house! His babysitter Z and her friend Bones come into his room, because they just like tormenting this kid to satisfy their sick twisted brains, I guess? He tries to tell them about the phone, but Bones just keeps harassing him. I also have a problem with this scene. You just got two teenagers 
monsters pinning this kid to his bed while making weird noises. Somebody seriously needs to make a Monster House out of context compilation. Bone starts to make out with DJ stuffed bunny. Aw, how sweet. Never mind, he starts ripping out its stuffing. Some dating advice. If your partner is making out with stuffed animals and then proceeding to rip out its insides, call the police and run. And you know, it started as just the stuffing from stuffed animals, and then it gradually grew to livers and kidneys. Z finally kicks him out of DJ's room, and DJ looks out the window, and oh my goodness, the blinds moved, which automatically means the house is alive. DJ calls Chowder, and I love the small detail when Chowder says his mom is at the movies with her personal trainer, and his dad is at the pharmacy. It kinda sounds like there's some cheating going on, doesn't it? DJ tells him to meet up with him, and as he's sneaking out of the house, we see Z and Bones talking on the couch. Bones says that Never Never took his kite when he was little, and then he starts harassing Z. This dude must be stopped! This is not normal behavior! She rightfully kicks him out, and DJ is able to leave. Bones is a little mad, though, but it's okay, he's got some unlabeled beer, which is all he needs. He goes on the crack slack's yard and starts taunting him because he's dead, hey <laughs> hey. He throws his bottle onto his yard and starts tearing up the grass, but I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, never mind, I guess it is, because he gets his old kite back. Oh, never mind. When he goes to grab it, he gets sucked in. With a movie with this title, I should have seen that coming. DJ goes to this random drained lake that's just behind his neighborhood. Why is this here? And why did they feel the need to drain the lake? He can't find Chowder, but that's probably because he's busy playing with his new toy he found. Yep, he found a bulldozer, and they leave the keys in them overnight. Oh my goodness, why is everybody in this movie absolutely terrible at everything they do? DJ tries to tell him that Flipper Dipper is alive, but he's like, you're crazy, probably because you killed a guy today. But he's eventually able to convince him to come check out the house, and he immediately gets bored. Chowder tells DJ he's gonna go ding-dong ditch the house to prove to him that there's no ghosts in it. He finds remnants of Bones being there, and we all know what happened to him. He rings the doorbell and nothing happens. Just kidding, you thought he would get off easy? Ha! The house becomes alive and tries to eat Chowder, but luckily they're both able to get back inside, even though it's just a house, it's not like it's gonna go anywhere. They spend the rest of the night just watching it, and there's also this girl that rings the doorbell 20 times. She's selling chocolates to get a head start on her bright future. When a guy with tattoos comes up to the drive-thru, give him his burger, not your phone number. That's actually pretty good advice. This girl is great at negotiating, though, and she's eventually able to convince Z to purchase some of her amazing chocolates. Z goes up to DJ's room to give him some, while you're actually being nice to him. Of course, it was mainly Bones who was being the troublemaker earlier. Well, never mind, because you also broke a plan and blamed it on him earlier. He and Chowder were up all night spying on the house, but nothing happened. Z's like, whatever, I'm out, and they see that girl that sold Z the cookies heading towards Never Clever's house. It's a sneaky house, too. It even gets rid of the keep out signs. It is hungry for human blood. They zoom outside to try and help her, but it's too late. The sidewalk gets lifted in the air, and she starts to fall towards the door, which is also the house's mouth. Thankfully, Chowder and DJ are able to save her at the last second, and when Z comes outside, the house quickly returns to normal. So now you have these two dudes and a girl who have just now almost died because of a house that is trying to eat them for some reason. She goes over to DJ's house, and these two are not the best around girls. <laughs> yeah, posters are stupid. <laughs> I was gonna tear them down and put up some art. She calls her mom, and they argue over her until she gets back. Then they witness a cute little doggy. Aw, oh, that just died. This is starting to get a bit out of hand, which is why this girl finally suggests they call the police. The police do indeed show up, and they don't really do anything except tease the kids. But they're definitely some of my favorite characters in the movie, especially this guy. <laughs> DJ tries to get the house to do anything, but it's smart and knows not to show itself when the cops are here. Chowder throws a rock at it, which suddenly makes this guy interested in the situation again. He tells them he'll let them off easy since DJ did a funny chicken dance, but to never mess with this guy's house again. With the police no longer an option, DJ and Chowder decide there's only one other person who can help them. Hi, is this the funeral morgue? Uh, yeah, I need to pick up a dead body. Um, Nevercracker? They actually decide to seek help from this guy, whose name is Skull. He's in the game zone right now, but this girl's like, screw it, we're going in. He tells them that the house has been possessed by a human soul, and the only way to stop it is if you stop it at the source, the heart. Then he runs off to actually do his job. But houses don't have hearts, says the kids, and probably you. Ah, but that's where you're wrong. Remember earlier when the fireplace started up and produced all that smoke in the sky? That's the heart. Knowing this, the kids devise a plan to go inside the house and extinguish the furnace. The plan is to steal, I mean borrow, some cough medicine from Chowderstead's pharmacy, use a vacuum cleaner disguised as a person as a dummy, and the cough medicine will put the house to sleep, and then they'll use their water guns to put out the fire in the furnace. Just use dynamite. They get started setting everything up, and when they're ready, they hide in some trash cans and wait. 
The vacuum cleaner is somehow able to move by itself, and the house buys it and starts to open up its mouth. But of course, that's when the useless cops show up, and they've somehow managed to become even more useless. They arrest the kids for loitering, littering, and just being weird, fair enough, and then this guy hears a noise and goes over to check it out. And can you guess what happens? Welcome back, everyone, to Collage of Useless Knowledge, where our contestants compete to see who has the best collage of useless knowledge. Our contestant today is Zachary Liddell, who was here to redeem himself after his last game ended with him failing miserably. If there's one thing I have a ton of useless knowledge on other than Stuart Little, it's Monster House. For one million dollars, what happens to this guy when he investigates the house? Easy peasy, he gets eaten. No, he gets grabbed by a tree and then is tossed Come in to be eaten. Then the kids also get sucked in, and since they're in the police car, they have no way of escaping, ha ha. Oh wait, stop it, don't use the back window, stop! Now they're inside the house, and since it thinks they were inside the car and got crushed, they can now snoop around without being caught. They find some dynamite, and also some pictures of Knacker Yacker's wife. DJ sprays the chandelier thingy, which actually turns out to be the uvula. DJ ends up falling through the floor, and Chowder and this girl follow him into the house's basement. This is where Bever Packer keeps all of the toys that he steals from poor innocent young kids. Chowder and girl want to get out of there, but DJ finds a cage with a lock on it, and he uses a key he found in Hacker Yacker's yard earlier to open it. Inside, they find a shrine, and a body covered in concrete. Well, that's definitely not disturbing. Especially not when DJ falls on top of it and the concrete breaks, revealing the person's skeleton. Apparently this is Constance, who is Zeverlacker's wife. This freaks the kids out. Come on, you've never seen a human skeleton before? I could maybe believe this girl hasn't seen one since she goes to a fancy private school, but in public school? Come on, you've definitely seen a human skeleton before. The kids all hide, but Chowder sees his ball, and of course he has to go get it. It's his ball! But that turns out to not be a smart idea, since he ends up getting carried away by slinkies, and the girl ends up getting sucked through a tube. DJ's all alone now, and he tries to go up the stairs, but he has to hurry because they're breaking behind him. He makes it to the first floor, and we see Chowder and this girl about to die. Chowder and DJ end up falling into the mouth, and they're hanging on for dear life. Luckily, the girl remembers the uvula and is able to activate it, which causes the house to cough them out. Chowder has had enough of DJ, but DJ has had enough of Chowder, so boom, checkmate. They start to get into an argument, and DJ leaves to go home until this car almost murders him. Wait, that's not a car, that's an ambulance. Wait, is that... It can't be. Oh my goodness, it's Snever Quacker. You thought he died? Heh, <laughs> I just said that to keep it a surprise. Turns out he didn't die when he fell to the ground earlier. He just... Just... Okay, so they never really say what happened, but it doesn't matter because he basically carries this whole movie, so it's good to have him back. He talks to the house and says, Honey, I'm home. That's right, if you haven't figured it out yet, the house is possessed by Constance, and we finally get to hear Clever Snacker's backstory. He used to go to this carnival where they had a woman named Constance, and people would just stare at her and throw tomatoes at her because she was big. For those who don't know, this was what people had before those TLC shows existed. She gets locked in this cage every night, but Cracker comes over and asks her if she wants to leave, and unsurprisingly, she does. So he hooks her up to his Ford F-150 and takes her away. He also surprises her with a piece of land they can build a house on, and she gets so excited she teleports into the future. Some hooligans are throwing rocks at the house. How did they get here? It looks like they live in a desert. Smacker Flipper is like, chill out, they're just kids, and she's like, kids with rocks! Then they start throwing eggs, and she grabs an axe and tries to frickin' murder them, but Weverjacker is like, you are escalating things way too quickly. She ends up falling backwards, and she tries to catch herself using this concrete machine, but all it does is make her suffocate on the basement floor. Wow, that got dark really fast, and then Flacker built the rest of the house on top of her for some reason. Then her spirit possessed the house, and in order to prevent her from attacking kids, he scares them off, and that's why he always screamed at them to GET OFF HIS LAWN! Okay, but that didn't mean you had to break that girl's tricycle, that you just did to be a jerk. And now he's gonna make things right, by blowing her up with dynamite, oh yeah! But she doesn't take too kindly to that, and the house becomes alive. I mean, it already was alive, but now it's able to walk around. It starts chasing them throughout the neighborhood, and Cracker Jacker's having a hard time keeping up, so instead he stops and tries to reason with her, and she starts to calm down, but once again, when she sees the dynamite, she freaks out again. But luckily, Chowder and the random bulldozer with the keys left inside it are here to save the day. They start to fend off the house, and they end up at the drained lake again. Clever Clapper also gives DJ the dynamite to blow the house up. His plan is to get on top of the giant crane and swing over the chimney, and drop the dynamite into the furnace. He and the girl head out, and he asks Chowder to lure the house under the crane. He and the girl end up falling down a cliff on their way to the crane, and Chowder also gets pushed off the cliff. But the house also gets pushed off the cliff, and it gets destroyed! Good job, you guys did it! Oh wait, 
never mind, it put itself back together. If it was able to put itself back together now, then how's the dynamite gonna help things? Well, I guess we'll see, because DJ and the girl finally make it to the crane and they begin to climb. And they better hurry though, because Chowder isn't doing too well fending off the house, especially when it eats his bulldozer. They make it to the top and right when DJ's about to throw it, he falls. Luckily, the girl is able to throw it and DJ miraculously catches it. How? Doesn't matter. How is he able to throw the dynamite perfectly into the chimney? Doesn't matter. How is he able to swing down and grab Chowder? Doesn't matter, because BAM! EXPLOSION! The day is saved! Never Slacker says a final goodbye to Constance's spirit, and then he celebrates since they're both finally free! He also gives all the kids their toys back, including Tricycle Girl. I still don't understand why you broke it in the first place, but I'm glad you were able to fix it and give it back to her. DJ and Chowder say bye to him and leave. Also, did nobody see the giant house? Nobody questions anything, and this little girl even asks him what happened to it. Did nobody see it? It's Halloween night, which means there should have been a ton of people out. Can only they see the house? No, because people acknowledged its existence earlier. Whatever, DJ's parents finally get back from hell, and he and Chowder decide to go trick-or-treating after all. Whoop whoop! During the credits, we also see Bones, the police officers, and the dog escape the house, so for all you dog lovers out there, he was fine. We also see that Z is dating Skull now, since he respects her more than Bones. Good, this guy's a future serial killer, mark my words. The end. Well, that was Monster House. Was it scary? No. It's a house. Honestly, I've always been more scared of things within reason. Serial killers, insane people, shooters, those have always been what scared me. When I was a kid, I was never scared of a monster in my closet, but more scared of a homeless person in my closet. But I like that even though it's a kid's movie, it still isn't afraid to ramp up the scariness at times. And I like the animation, it's kinda like stop motion, just without the stop motion. Characters are all funny, so are the jokes. I think on the Zacker Attacker movie Raider, this is getting a 9. I can't really think of anything bad to say about this movie. The only weird thing is slapper weather. I understand his motives for scaring the kids, he's trying to protect them from Constance, but why does he steal their toys? That just feels like pouring salt on the wound, it's like you scared them off, you already won, you don't need to take their toys, and you certainly don't need to break them in front of them. But other than that, everything checks out, a really fun movie that I would definitely recommend watching during Halloween, or any time of the year for that matter. Well, now that that's done, I can finally go trick-or-treating. Um, I'm a firefighter cowboy Mario. There's this guy named Bones that lives next door to me, and I bet he has a ton of candy. And that is why I have a flesh wound running down my chest.